Okay. So, um, thank you for the introduction. So, consider uh, an I/O access to a device. So, consider there is a device D, which has some secret input, secret S stored its, in its memory, and there is a user. And consider the interaction where the user can send some X and get some reply D uh, of X, and this can happen many rounds. So. Many runs. However, we, we we all know the implementation of the device may not be perfectly secure, as there are very like well-known side channel attacks initiated by culture, and there is a very celebrated result uh, by Holdman et al. Uh, showing that a code boot attack can like reveal uh, many part of your secret S. So this is captured by the following attack where the adversary can specify a function G and get some leakage G of S. And in the continual model, this can happen for many rounds. So another G prime and gets another G prime of S. So in another uh, type of attack considered by, as initiated by uh, Biham Shamir, where the adversary may tamper with the memory, like so we capture this by the adversary can send some function f and replace the secret s with f, f of s. And this can happen uh, many times in the continual attack. Uh, so it's very natural to consider uh, both attack, and this was considered by us, and uh, Bhavna, Kalai, and uh, Sahai, uh, previ in previous year. Um, so in this model, the adversary can do an I.O. query and can get some leakage and can also tamper with the memory. And this can happen for ma many rounds and in arbitrary uh, order. And we need to give a remark that in this model, computation or update uh, happen bef between the attacks uh, so this is unlike the model of Mikali and Raisin who consider uh, com uh, leakage during the computation. So in this talk, we will stick on in this model, uh, in our model where like, uh, we assume that computation uh, does not leak here. And um, with other technique, we can like, uh, achieve uh, further result like to deal with computation leakage, but uh, so it's not in this talk. So we consider previous work. So if only tempering is allowed, then Gennaro et al, uh, there are like a series of positive results. And uh, if only leakage is allowed, like there are even more uh, positive results in, of, uh, in various models. However, in the combined attack, attack model, uh, we showed that if there is no randomness access to, uh, for the device, then it's impossible to achieve uh, any um, secure result, even in very restricted attack models. However, if there is fresh randomness on update, then it's possible to construct encryption and signatures. However, so where do we get randomness while under attack? So, and in, as the previous talk also motivated, uh, randomness can be a very, very uh, like uh, precious resource. So we do not want randomness in this setting. So our goal is an architecture that can tolerate both attacks at the same time uh, without assuming uh, undevice randomness. However, this is impossible, so we cannot set a goal that contradicts our previous result. So we need uh, a reasonable restriction on the adversary's leakage and tempering power. So let's state our main result. So we give a generic compiler that given any uh, device D produces a, 
a secure version of D. So, in, so both devices have identical I.O. behavior, and security is leakage and temper resilient in the split state model with a Kanban reference string. So now we define this split state model. So instead of storing your secret in one place, we consider a case where you uh, store your secret in two places that are physically far apart, and the two parts are attacked separately. So this model was not invented by us. It was considered before in by Dimbovsky, Piaciak, Weeks, and uh, Dodis, Luca, Waters, and Weeks, and Halevi, Lin, and like the study of two source extractors and in many, many other uh, places. So yeah. Um, so more concretely, so in this model, the, the attacker the adversary needs to specify two functions, G1, G2, and he can get uh, G1, on, G1, M1, and G2, M2 for leakage. Similarly, for tempering, he needs to specify two tempering functions, and he can replace uh, with F1, M1, and F2, M2. So, uh, previously, uh, Dimbovsky et al. identified an and constructed a very, very powerful primitive code, non-malleable code, and show how to use non-malleable code to protect from tempering attacks. So the idea is we encode some string S into some code C, and because we are considering split state model, so that will be M1, M2, such that tempering on the code word is useless. So the high-level idea of non-malleability is saying that more than the code word does not reveal anything about the encoded secret. So consider the following experiment. So you have a string S, and which, is get, uh, wh which gets encoded to some uh, code word. So think of the, this as some structure of your code word. And consider this tempering experiment. So you tamper with the code word. And it can result only in two cases. So either you, 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 you didn't hit the, the code, so you leave it unchanged. Otherwise, you can totally destroy the information of S, so you can result in something totally unrelated. So this is formally uh, captured by this. Uh, so we say for all little f, fun function f in the class big F, and all input string s, s prime, the following tempering experiments are indistinguishable. So we, we have temper f and s, which output saying if fc equals c, that captures the first case of the outcome saying the tempering function does not change anything. And otherwise, it outputs the code of FC, so we, we say that, that S and S prime in this experiment, if F change, change C, then the decode should be like indistinguishable. So this is, we know this is impossible in, for general. However, DPW showed how to construct them in the split state model with the help of random oracle and their uh, they, their result is for all unbounded functions. And for us, we construct them in the split state model with the help of a common reference string. And we consider for all polynomial size functions. And we, we claim that uh, this is a great re improvement for in, in terms of randomness efficiency because we don't want randomness, and in previously, uh, if like you want random oracle, that's require, that requires a lot of randomness, and common reference string is uh, definitely uh, better than random oracle. So, so this, what do we mean by polynomial size functions? So we, uh, the F is all polynomial size, uh, and in the common reference string model, the temper experiment can access to the CRS, 
and the encode and decode algorithm can also access to the Kanban reference string. So how can non-malleable code protect from tampering attack? So uh, we show that uh, by a simulation paradigm where the, the adversary's view in the real attack can be simulated in a world where there is no secret involved. So th this means, uh, uh, so consider the following two experiments. By the non-malleability non of the code, uh, we, we know uh, they are indistinguishable. So now we go to our construction, which is very simple. So to encode a string S, we sample a public key and secret key, and we store the secret key in uh, the left-hand side and public key in the right-hand side. And we encrypt uh, the, the string S, and we put a zero knowledge, non-interactive zero knowledge proof. And here is why we need CRS. So, uh, we require the encryption scheme to be leakage resilient. And we require unique PK for each SK and unique SK for each PK. And this is not precise, but just think of like PK and SK need, need to be uh, one one. And also we require the proof to be non-malleable or robust NIZK uh, proof of knowledge of SK and the decryption of C. So robust NIZK uh, means like even with access to the simulator, the adversary can only produce uh, proofs whose weaknesses can be extracted. This captures the case that he can only produce proofs he, know, uh, he knows about the witness. So let's try to prove the security. So we have a reduction and reduction is talked uh, talking to the challenger. And the challenger sends some PK and reduction, uh, sample some CRS. The adversary will say, okay, uh, I, I'm going to attack the temper experiment with tempering function S and state uh, strings S1, S2. And reduction will ask for leakage and challenger reply and then um, the reduction says, okay, S1, S2 are the strings I'm going to attack, and the challenger, okay, will in encrypt uh, one of them. And now the reduction needs to simulate the tempering experiment, and then ask the adversary. The adversary says, I prime, and the reduction will say, okay, I think uh, it's S, I prime. Okay, so the high, so our goal here is to, for the reduction to compute, temper, the temper experiment. So remember, the temper needs, experiment needs to uh, distinguish same or decode uh, F of C. So the reduction needs to first prepare a, a, code, a code word. But the code word looks like this, but this part M1 equals SK's reduction doesn't have SK. So hopefully we don't need this piece of information. Also, reduction needs to pro provide a proof, pi. However, he doesn't know the witness. But because the reduction simulates the CRS, so he can use zero knowledge uh, simulator to produce this pi. And then, we consider the tempering function F equals F1, F2. So F2, let's consider F2 on input M2. Suppose it really modified uh, M2. Then we consider the following case. If pi prime is in, uh, in, an invalid proof, then the temper experiment should output null. So that's not a big deal. Otherwise, you can extract the witness S prime and S K prime from the proof pi prime. And this is because robust NIZK. And uh, uh, it seems that the output should, of this experiment should be S prime. However, this is only true if S K prime equals F1 of M1. Otherwise, it should be null. 
So this piece of information, the reduction, uh, does not know. And on the other branch, if M2, if F2 doesn't change anything, we need to consider the case if whether F changes uh, M1. If it does, then it sh the experiment should be same. Otherwise, it should be null. So the, the high level, uh, the information here, I want to say is there is some information that reduction cannot compute. And we need you to use leakage query here. To, so the reduction needs to query some leakage in order to help him to figure out which case it is. So I don't have time to explain how to which leakage query to, uh, the reduction needs to make. However, this is a little bit tricky, and uh, I will leave that t uh, to you. So um, in addition to tempering uh, non-malleability, our uh, code also is leakage resilient in the case that if the adversary is querying some leakage function G, and then the reduction can query this to the challenger, and still the proof will go through. So now, um, uh, I'm going to tell you in very briefly how we can use uh, non-malleable code to achieve leakage plus tempering resilience. So recall that our goal is to uh, des design a compiler. So first, I will like, so first we consider a, a randomized construction, which means the compiler outputs a randomized device. So what the compiler does, okay. So first it encodes, it gets the, the original device D and it encodes the secret S to some M1, M2 and stores in the, uh, the right-hand side, and this, the right-hand side secure D on input X first, it decodes, and then uh, it refreshes its input, uh, sorry, it refreshes an encoding of its secret, and then it outputs D of X. And the re refreshing part is where we use randomness. And in, a, in the second construction, we show how to uh, like de-randomize uh, the uh, previous one. So instead of storing uh, the, the sec encoding of your secret, you store and additionally the, a seed of, and the device the, in the right-hand side first decodes, and then it plugs in with a PRG with the seed. And then, it, so now we have a lot of randomness and then we can uh, refresh the encoding with a new seed prime using the random coin. And then we output D as D on input X. So um, here in our full version of the paper, we show uh, it's secure and we don't have trouble with uh, like circular security. So I will make a conclusion that we trade off perfect randomness for a split state model. We get leakage uh, temp and temporary resilience for every functionality. And also, we achieve after the fact leakage and temporary. And this uh, was a problem identified by Halevi and Lin in last year. And we achieved very strong simulation a base security, uh, and our uh, uh, new non-malleable code uh, may be of independent interest. Okay, thank you. Okay.